As you can see, there's a lovely train unit here, seven and a half tons, a big mamma jamma by our measurements alone. We had to take this sucker out, get it down the hallway, down the stairwell, and out of the building and bring up a new one up. Here's a little look at the stairwell that I'm talking about. And here's our apparatus we built to get it down the stairs. It was a little tense, but it went down a lot easier. The other one came up. Here's the heater kit, 25KW. You see the connections and the double stack limit switch there in the middle, the black thing. Two contactors for each bank of heat strips. So a big old heat kit. Like I said, 25KW, a lot of coils there. We have three red wires right here. The high voltage. This is the high voltage, three phase power going in. Three smaller wires right there. The brown is coming. You can tell that by looking at the bottom of both contactors. Brown goes to both of those. Sort of narrow it down, plus I looked at the wiring diagram. And then there's two different wires for first and second stage of heat. You can see the two different contactors right there. There's some guy. My brother's about to blow out the lines here, so I got it all set up. Block some of the stuff that comes out of there. And there we have our copper coming out of the reversing valve. Got a big old compressor there with what looks like I'm guessing is the motor controller for head pressure, a little ambient coolant. Haven't really paid much attention to it yet. Got a couple transformers, some double pole, double thread relays, have a contactor up there. Looks like a voltage monitor. They got some pressure right there. Got the voltage monitor right there, which looks like an ICM that's been rebadged. So there's our condenser for heat pump. Inside here we can see the blower motor. I'm going to double check the wiring to see if it comes wired for 460 or 2083 phase. There's a little, what looks like a little uh, plug that you move from spot to spot depending on what you need. I just don't know what spot it's in right now, so we're going to go get the instructions. It's probably written on the front of the motor somewhere. I'm going to double check with the instructions, but yeah, let's go check over there. But it is. You can see the high voltage connection. And I could read a small lettering, I could probably figure it out. But I'll probably just read the book. <laughs> I'm getting older, guys. The vision's not as good as I'm a double check. Also, we need to figure out where we're going to put that TXV sensing bowl. It's going to go on the suction line. We just want to see what their recommendations are first. There's our rear bearing. Super. About to put this thing in the closet. So the electrician can wire up that heater up there. Hey guys, we're chasing after this Goodman authorized dealer up here. Let me see if I can catch him. I got the minivan maxed out, 45. Let's see if we can catch him up here. I see him up there in the distance. It's the Goodman factory authorized representative dealer for the lower 48 states for America. So we can catch him. It's a beautiful day, by the way. We're going back to the church. Man, we're gonna get all jammed up and stuck behind this boat. Damnable boat. Now we're heading across the Market Street overpass by the Best Western behind the big black truck. Nope, there he is, guys. There he is. The Goodman Factory Authorized Dealer. I hope you got to see him at least a little bit. It was awesome. We have the vacuum pulling down to 5,500 microns slowly but surely. Evacuating the system. Comes with a nitrogen charge, you have to evacuate the whole thing, so it's going to take a while. You have to run that second wire, to go right to that board. Should be a lot of fun. Suck. Guys, because there's a Reliatel board in the outdoor unit, we had to have two wires. So we had to run a wire from up there, coming down through here, down here, back to the thermostat, because the thermostat wire runs directly to the outdoor unit with this new style 7.5 ton unit with that board in it. So if you have the older ones, it would run directly just like an old system would always do. They'd meet at the air handler, but it's not the case now. So we ran the wire, so now we're going to wire it up. Hopefully start this thing up before too awful long. Looking at my thermostat here, see how it was wired so I can wire it outside. There's our emergency off switch, which is required. Do not turn off. Okay, our system is wired up. I have an amp clamp on the blower down there. You can't even see it hardly. I'm going to have to cover up the door to get an accurate measurement. This would be a good case to have a Bluetooth amp clamp. I guess there is a good case for it. It's not really that often, but you know, whatever.
Archer. Let's see if she turns on here. She's not running yet. I would expect that she would do it immediately. That is strange. I think it's like milliseconds or whatever it is. I wonder how it knows that. You know what? I don't know. So, when the controller turns on... I can switch any two phases. Please. Yeah. When the controller turns on, the Reliatel thing, the current is supplied to the compressor crankcase heater to the normally closed contacts of the crankcase heater relay when the compressor is not running. So as long as it's not running, it's on. When it turns on, it powers it down. Phase monitor is powered. I looked up there and there was a big old red light because the phases were reversed. The control transformer is powered. So we had power going up to the thermostat, coming back on the G-wire for the fan, but not leaving because of the out of phase. The Reliatel control board, RTRM, is powered and performs self-diagnostic checks to ensure that all internal controls are functioning. The Reliatel control board, RTRM, checks the configuration parameters against the components connected to the system. The system LED located on the RTRM module is turned on within one second after power up if all internal operations are correct. So there'll be an LED over here somewhere. I don't see where it's at, but I guess we'll see it once it turns on. The communications board is powered if installed, not applicable. The indoor thermostat is powered. But it was powered up. That must have had a light on that I missed. Oh, Depending on the way the sun is shining right now. Yeah, the sun is beating down. So we can do that and then try that again. That, was, that wasn't too painful. We have our little ICM knockoff. It's green now. I don't know if you can see that. There's a green light on so the phases are correct. So the fan should be running upstairs. Let's check and see if the control voltage is leaving here. Going to the fan. Not yet. Well, let's see if it's coming in. Maybe right? it's not even coming in. This is great. It is coming in, so we'll see what happens. See why it's not going out. Maybe it takes a second for it to get all ramped up here. We'll see. The controller just needed a minute to ramp up, so to speak. So it's all ready to go. So I'm checking the blower ramps here, and I'll show you guys what those are. As you can see, we have an indoor fan motor that's 5.3 to 5.0, depending on 208, 230, or 208, so we should be 5.3 or less, all the way down to 2.5 for 460. We have our south wire meter up here, says so the return air temperature down here is 87. It seems a little warm to me, but it is coming from the attic right now. So after it runs for a minute, it should come on down pretty good. So we're going to check it here in a few minutes. We'll look at the supply temperature as well. The supply temperature is right here at 76.5. It should come down as well, so we'll see how that goes. Well, it's been running for a while now, 20, 30 minutes. Charged up about 21 pounds of R410A. So we're going to look at the temperatures here on the line and see what they look like. Should have leveled out a little bit. Charging is coming to a close. Probably need a, you know, two or three more pounds. Be about right. South wire meter says 87.7. This thing is all over the place. <laughs> Look at that. That doesn't seem very reliable to me. <laughs> so if it is right, it's around around 79 to 80 degrees on the return side. I'm measuring from down there. Just kind of a rough measurement. Looks like we're right around 61.3, which puts us at around 18 degrees or so split. Might be a little bit high of a split. I don't know what the humidity is in here. We'll have to get a general humidity. We can use this device for that as well. Figure out what our target evaporator split should be. A little bit humid in here. 74 degrees is what it says. 66. It's coming down a little bit. So the target temperature split in here probably something like 16 degrees right in there. Use the target temperature rule of thumb that I developed a while back. So maybe on the low airflow side, but not too awful bad. And this thing is not very reliable at all. So should be getting some drain water out here shortly. Let's see. 
Yep, definitely getting some drain water out. Went ahead and checked everything out, cleaning that stuff up here. It's a mechanical room. She's quiet. Let's make a roar one more time. There she goes again. Check outside, check that unit running. Put 25 pounds of refrigerant in it.